Hello friends, welcome back. Today we will run functional tests using a headless browser. Um, so as a reminder, we set this up on REPL.IT. We already have one running here. And so if you need to set that up, go to the first video in the series. Uh, in the next challenge is we are going to simulate the human interaction with a page using a device called a headless browser. A headless browser is a web browser without a graphical user interface. These kinds of tools are particularly useful for testing web pages as they are able to render and understand HTML, CSS, and JavaScript the same way a browser would. For these challenges, we are using uh, Zombie.js. It's a lightweight browser with a totally, which is totally based on JS, meaning JavaScript, without relying on additional binaries to be installed. Uh, this feature makes it usable in an environment such as REPL.IT. There are many other more powerful options. Uh, look at the examples in the code for the exercise directions. Follow the assertion order, and we rely on it. Follow the assertion order. So that just means, like, I did that in a previous lesson, um, or a previous error. The assertion order matters. So even though this would be a totally legit um, test, you want to keep the order of assertions uh, the same. So yeah, so let's uh, continue on. Um, yeah, this was the last lesson that we did. Um, we see if we run the test right now, the one that's failing is non, not node modules, lib document JS uh, 764 document JS. So now I'm guessing that this is actually a misleading um, error. So what we'll do is just read through this. Uh, in the next example, we'll see how to send a request payload or a body. We are going to put the, is this the right one? Columbo. No, we've already done that. Interesting. So yeah, it's I'm not I'm having a hard time figuring this out. Node module lib process rejections. Okay. Same as Italian explorers. Okay, this is where we were the last. So okay, here we are with the zombie JS. So we're gonna start on line 165 of the second uh, tests. So in this tests folder, we're on two functional tests. Uh, for these challenges, we're using zombie.js. It's a lightweight browser. Totally. Okay, we already talked about that. So here we set our browser is equal to zombie. So we're in, in, initializing the zombie library and we're saving it to a constant of uh, browser. Um, on GoMix, we'll use this setting. Copy your project's URL here. Okay, so our project for this one is this guy. Um, and so I guess we'll just put that there. If you are testing on a local environment, replace the line above. Um, yeah, so we're not doing that. So we're going to be able to do it like this. So now I'm guessing that this is right. Sweet E2 testing with zombie JS function, constant browser. So here we're creating a new um, test suite and we're passing in a callback action. And in this callback, we're setting the browser equal to a new instantiation of um, the zombie library. So Mocha allows you to prepare the ground running some code uh, before the actual tests. This can be useful, for example, to create items in the database, which will be used in the successive tests. With a headless browser, before the actual testing, we need to visit the page we are going to inspect. The suite setup hook is executed only once at the start, uh, the suite startup. Um, other different hook types can be executed before each test, after each test, or at the end of a suite. See the Mocha docs for more information. All right. So remember web in interactions are asynchronous. Um, we want to return a browser visit done. Browser asynchronously um, takes a callback. So <clears throat> yeah, here we have browser. We've set that here. So we're calling on the new instantiation of um, the zombie library. We're saying visit and forward slash done. So this tells me this is just visiting the, fo the, uh, the root domain. So we're actually just going to be visiting this guy. And so in famous Italian explorers from, and then we have our function, a callback. So we've got another suite going here. And so here, before all hook. Okay. Uh, in HTML main view, we provide a input form. It sends data to the put travelers endpoint uh, that we use above with an Ajax request. When the request completes successfully, the client code appends a div containing the infos 
returned by the call to the DOM. As a starter, try to input form manually. Okay, so here they just say try polo. So we just try to start polo. And um, it seems to just be loading. Surname, yeah. Uh, did it? Okay, wait, explore polo, not required to pass test. Did it? Okay, let's see how to automate the process. Um, did it what? Successful client appends a div. Uh, so here, test. Uh, fill surname polo. Surname is this guy, so we put polo in there. Press the submit button. Press sub submit. Uh, press button is asynchronous. It waits for the Ajax call to complete. Assert that the status is okay. Um, is okay 200. So I guess we could go zombie, I mean, to assert browser.assert.success 200. Assert that the text inside the element span name is Marco, span name Marco. So it looks like that's already filled in. Span name Marco, okay. Browser.assert text surname is Polo and assert text span date is one. Interesting. Now it's your turn. Please don't use the example in the title. Use the keyword example in the title. Um, so yeah, here we've got submit surname Colombo, write E2E test function. And then we're passing it in. So now we're doing a test and what we want to, and we're setting it to here. So browser, um, so is the callback. We want to assert that it's 200. Assert that the text inside the element of span name is Christophero. Assert that the text inside the element span uh, surname is Colombo. And assert the element's uh, span dates exist and their count is one. All right. Um, so yeah, don't forget to remove assert.fail. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove assert.fail. Um, and then let's say press button is async. Wait for the Ajax call is complete. Press button, wait for the A. Okay, so browser, our first one is going to be, what is it, browser.assert.status is 200. Did I get that right? Browser.assert.success. Oh, you know what? I don't think that this one actually needs a callback. I think that this is just telling us this is how you assert success. So, um, Instead of saying status, we can just say S-U-C-C-E-S, success, and then get rid of the 200. We'll see how that works. Um, yeah, okay. And so the next one is going to be uh, browser.assert.text. Um, and then in here, we'll pass in a, a string with span um, name. And then we want to make sure that it's uh, Christopher. So we're just passing in um, to this two elements and we're asserting that they're equal. Um, and so the same thing here. Browser.assert.text um, span surname. And then we want to make that equal to Colombo with a capital C. And dates exists and they're one. Hmm. Here, did they do the dates, element, span, dates? Okay, browser.assert.element. Um, span, dates, and we wanna make sure it's one. Okay. Um, no help this time. Okay, so in this last one, what they've done is they've helped us by saying browser.fill, press button, submit, and that sort of thing. And so um, we have this, actually, I think that this is part of the next lesson. And so my guess is that this is going to uh, run right now. So if we run the, t we, I started the server, uh, and we're running the tests. Looks like, um, I think that this is passing, yeah. So if we go to Polo here, what does it? Okay, cool, so it actually does do that. Uh, the re reason it wasn't running previously was because uh, we had, our server wasn't running. And so now it looks like Marco Polo, that's what we were trying to get to happen. Um, and so, yeah, I think that this is actually the, what we needed to do. So if I come over here and paste my URL into free code camp, 
Looks like we passed the test. So that's what they wanted to do. So again, what we're doing is in this section is we're basically just making a bunch of little robots that test our code. So what this is saying is, I mean, the whole headless browser thing, I don't entirely understand, but basically I think that it makes it so you can run tests more quickly. So, you know, you fill in the surname, you press the button to submit, and then it says, okay, well, first off, did the submit button work after, you know, the um, put request uh, was sent over the wire and then sent back. If it was a success, okay, cool. It was a successful browser assert the text. So we're, we're asserting that the text is here. And so if I inspect the element here, you're going to see that um, Marco is in span with an ID because it's got a hash there of name. And so that goes to Marco. And so because we, we filled in uh, Columbo in here, if we fill in Columbo, and we send it, you'll see that that's Columbo's here. And so the next one span is surname. And if we inspect this element, we'll see that that's the span of surname. So it's asking, we're saying, is the text there, Columbo? The surname, the Columbo? And it is on this one. And then so the uh, span dates, we want to assume, I don't understand exactly, why is that one? I guess maybe it's just because there's one uh, element in the dates rather than less than one or like more than one. So if there were multiple dates, maybe that's what that is. Um, but all of this stuff will be f more visible at uh, zombie JS. So if I were trying to understand this at a greater, deeper level, and I was actually doing some testing switches for this, I would want to just look through, and this is just going to give me a bunch of ideas on how to operate this library. Um, cool. But uh, the tests are passing, so we're good for that one. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.